Hi everybody and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today I'm going to be talking about um, how it is likely that listening to all my stuff and showing it to your wife, harassing her, I mean, you know, uh, sharing with her uh, all of my uh, bon mots of wisdom will uh, possibly get you to get laid one more time per week, if not more, but in the majority of cases where I've seen that magical change transpire, um, the guy doesn't care within in like a couple of weeks, he realizes that is not adequate because deeper needs were not addressed on his end as well as within the relationship as a whole. So we will get to that all and unpack that right after I, of course, tell you to subscribe. My most recent subscriber only episode was why it is not the aphrodisiac you may think it is to yell at your children and how that really makes your wife not want to have sex with you. Um, and, uh, there's really not much to say more about that, except of course, there's also 69, haha, other episodes that you can get if you become a subscriber and you should also join my Facebook group because that's where I get the majority of my podcast ideas and I interact avidly in that group. So if you want to be able to talk to me for uh, beyond a fraction of what it would cost to be my client, although obviously you're not getting the same level of engagement as that, but certainly you get to talk to me in, uh, in frequently real time whenever I go into that group in the comment section. I mean, this is all via, you know, comments and stuff. And also you get to interact with plenty of other people in that group that have similar interests to you that are also people who like to read my stuff and listen to my stuff. So anyway, um, let's go to the topic at hand, which is this magical idea that men have that unfortunately does not work, that if their wife just has sex with them one more time per week or so, uh, everything's going to be better and they're going to be a happier man. Now, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be a, a, well, you know what? I was going to say you wouldn't be a less unhappy man, but Ironically, sometimes people do become a less unhappy, a less happy man with the addition of the one more time per week of sex. And you might say, how does that work? Um, I'm a numbers guy and that seems to uh, not be reasonable, but it is because this entire time you've had in your mind the potential of what your relationship could turn into if your wife just just, you know, gave you a blowjob every so often or just had sex with you, you know, a couple more times a month or, or, or maybe you're a big thinker and you're like, yeah, it'll be two times more per week. That would truly make me happy. Well, I really think you could probably get there, honestly, to, um, to shut you up. You know, your wife probably would do that if she was inundated with enough of my shit and or you threaten divorce. Not that I'm telling you to act in any of those ways. Don't do either of those things unless you truly mean that you want to leave. Um, but don't, don't use like random ass threats that you don't intend. You know, that's just manipulative bullshit. But anyway, my, my point is when men get to the point that their wife is finally like, you know what? I understand that physical touch is a real love language. I, I may have been thinking about it wrong. You know, like you've shown me enough of this woman's shit that like, I must be forced to capitulate. Fine. I love you. I'll do it. Um, so few men are happy with that because that isn't exactly what they, that that's not what they really needed. Now, what do they really need and, or who is drawn to a dynamic in which their needs have been ignored for uh, a decade or around there? Sometimes too, I get men in. Um, Well, it's going to be men with unresolved childhood issues because as I just discussed in the most recent podcast about who thinks they deserve a bad sex life, which you may think, oh, I never thought I deserved it. Well, listen, if you put up with something for 10 years, there's some part of your subconscious that thinks you deserve it. So the men that are drawn to situations like this are men who did not get their emotional needs met early in life and did not feel prioritized. And those men really need to be in therapy, which means that 100% of the men that think that magically their life would be transformed by one more time of your five to 10 minute intercourse per week need to be in therapy. Not just because when I say it like that, it does sound delusional, but because there are obvious, deep psychological, emotional issues in your family of origin that have made you fixate on the fact that one person and one vagina could cure all of your problems without a deeper connection and understanding. So there are ways for your relationship to improve such that you feel a lot different about everything. But I'll tell you what they do not include. They do not include basically emotionally blackmailing your wife into having more sex with you because otherwise she thinks that you're going to leave her. That doesn't work in the long term. 
so then you may say, what am I suggesting and why have you been sending all of my podcasts to your wife to the point that she wants to uh, remove her eardrums by force? Um, what I'm suggesting is that you first got to look at yourself. There is no man I've ever worked with that uh, has this fantasy about the transformational power of incremental sexual change that does not have in his upbringing a profound, profound deficit in how his needs were met. I'm telling you this. You may not want to believe me, um, but you're probably open to it. If you listen to 200 plus podcasts, you're probably open minded. <laughs> um, but that this is God's honest truth. So here's what happened really quickly. I mean, all this shit could have been pieced together from my other stuff, but what am I if not helpful? So I'll summarize it again. You grew up getting your needs kind of uh, ignored, if not minimized and mocked. Best case situation ignored. You're likely a workhorse sort of guy. You put your the pedal to the metal and you've worked hard. You think that this is your worth as a man is what you can do and provide, not who you intrinsically are. This makes you subconsciously drawn to a woman who, um, now this is the not flattering part for the woman, the, the woman's, the woman's I was going to say, the women who are sent this podcast, but men like this are drawn to women who are a little bit self centered because why it's fascinating to them <laughs> it's fascinating it's like you can say what you want and need and shit that you don't want to do and like you're cool doing that and you're like even confident doing it so it's it's funny like the like so if you look back into your courtship with uh your wife who now won't sleep with you as much as you want um And I'll get to the fact of how biology interacts with this whole thing, because you may be like, what the fuck? You told me that within monogamy, all female desire decreases. And so how could it be that one specific type of guy is more prone to this marital dissatisfaction in the bedroom than others? I'll tell you, but just wait. So the point I was making previously was in your courtship, um, is very likely that you thought it was very cute that your wife was selfish in certain ways, even childlike in certain ways. Um, so like she really, really cared about like where y'all went to eat or she really, really cares about how you go- you're going to raise kids. This one is like catnip to a man who's been emotionally ne- neglected. These fantasies that 20 somethings have about like with how they're going to raise their kids, thinking that a woman that you're into would give a shit enough about her kids <laughs> to like have a whole game plan for parents is very um, adorable to men who were really kind of left as feral animals on their own. You know, um, not ex- not su- not entirely, but men who were not get who did not get their emotional needs met. This is like the the most bitter irony. They're drawn to women who are like, this is the kind of parenting I'm going to do. We're going to do Montessori because when I have a child, my child's always going to be validated, and I'm going to read to them every night. I'm going to read them books about emotions and like all this stuff. Now, this stuff doesn't have to be said explicitly. It could be said later on in the courtship. It could even be said when she was pregnant. But I'm telling you, the woman who has a lot of opinions about everything is who you were drawn to because you were not allowed to have any such opinions in your early life. So this is fascinating and attractive to you, yin and yang. However, what happens? Little Madison is born and yeah, she does. She starts reading the damn books about big emotions and she becomes totally fixated on Little Madison's emotional development and you don't get laid anymore. Uh, so uh, the, the bitterest of ironies, yet you adaptively, evolutionarily made the right choice because little Madison's probably really happy. or she, And she will uh, stay so as long as y'all work on the marriage, so keep listening to my podcast. Not that children of divorce are, you know, going to die or anything. I have my own three. They're doing pretty well. But you know what I mean. <laughs> let's, let's get off that tangent about Madison. Let her read the book by herself for a change in the corner of this hypothetical while we focus on you and your wife. So So what happens is you get involved with a woman who tends to be somewhat self oriented, let's say, uh, much more in in touch with her needs, let's say, than you. And so after the marriage starts, when her sex drive goes down, she's going to be less likely than the average woman to do shit she doesn't want to do. Um, Especially after kids, when the biological sex drive decreases, you know, times a million. 
it, it exponentially, precipitously declines, and uh, then she never really wants to have sex, so then she never does, uh, or she very rarely does. And so you are used to never getting your needs met, so you let this shit go on for far, far, far too long. And it's been years and years and years and years because on a very deep level, you did not believe that you deserved anything different because it was very subconsciously familiar to you to have your needs denied. So the first thing that your ass needs to do instead of sending these podcasts to your wife is to get into your own therapy, in your own individual insight-oriented psychotherapy in which you are going to tackle your family of origin issues, your self-esteem issues, why do you think that your only worth is in what you can do and provide and achieve, and why did you not think it was a red flag when she laughed at your desire for, you know, uh, oral sex, let's say, early in the relationship, or when she used to chide you for being too sexual even before the marriage started, even in a, quote, joking way, Or when she never does really much of anything that you want to do when you're frank with yourself. (laughs) Why did you not think that this was a red flag, right? And, you know, she may have been a lot less self-centered with a different kind of guy who self-advocated. So, like, you made the problem worse, you know, by always trying to do everything she wants, everything she wants, everything she wants. Why did you do this? Because you don't think you deserve to say what you want. And I'm not saying that you're some, like, little victim of this. Well, you were as a child. And also what kind of woman... It becomes like she did. Usually, the houses are not very dissimilar um, in that they're dysfunctional. So, uh, like the Tolstoy quote, which is, um, I think all unhappy families are are similar. Or is all happy families are similar and all unhappy families. Either way, I shouldn't have brought it up because I obviously don't know <laughs> the key difference of whether it was unhappy or happy that he said we're all similar. But the point being that happy and unhappy families are pretty different from one another. And you and your wife were likely raised in equivalently dysfunctional families, although slightly different. She saw one parent uh, very often self-advocate and uh, decided, resolved to never be rolled over or steamrolled as she saw the other parent being. So she became more of the uh, decider in the relationship and you became more of the person who has shit decided, at least within the family realm. Although outside of that in business, you may be Mr. Decision Maker in the home. Have you decided anything recently? By recently, I mean ever Probably not. So um, anyhow, this is how this dynamic develops. So you need to get into your own therapy because here's what's going to happen if you get laid one more time per week, which I truly, I have faith in you. I have helped men do this. And uh, you really can. You can get laid more. You can. You know what? It's not going to help anything. It's not going to help anything except you got maybe one less time a week to masturbate. So which, uh, who cares? So the point being that you're not worried about the quantity what you, and you're not even worried about the quality. What you really want is the validation and the understanding from your wife that you matter. This is what you want on a super deep level. And since your prime way to express love is physically, it will be massively healing if you can get your wife to understand that your deep emotional needs are met by sex. And no matter how often she does it, even if she only had one wonderful glowing sexual experience with you ever before, uh, you know, her vagina was taken away in some kind of tragic accident, you would love her more and feel better about yourself in the relationship if you just had this one magical sexual encounter in which she said, wow, I truly deeply understand what you want. You want love and attention and affection. I deeply love you. And this is close uh, sex that I am giving you because I deeply love you. That is what you want. It doesn't matter how often or anything. You want any understanding that sex to you makes you feel better and like more of a man and closer and it can be healing for your childhood experience of of being ignored. That's what reparenting does within a healthy intimate relationship. People get their childhood wounds reparented and they get to feel better about these deep things that they felt like shit about always. So having one more time of sex per week where she's like, here, hurry up, get it over with, 
is going to make things worse, not better. Or even if she learns never to say, hurry up, get it over with, if it's this no foreplay, quick intercourse, tur- you know, she turns over and you do it, you could do that every night and it wouldn't change anything. Because you want her mind, not her body. And oh my God, what does that sound like? That sounds like the feminist stuff that she's always saying, right? That she wants to be loved for her mind, not her body? Well, check it out. So do you. You want a meeting of the minds in which she finally understands the primacy that you place on the sexual connection because it repairs these childhood wounds in which you never felt like enough. You never felt loved for you. For a man, sex is being loved truly for who he is. Nothing to do about what he earns, nothing to do about what he can do for the family. He wants sex that is not transactional, which is so interesting because that's what women say that they want as well. So if you really want to heal the relationship, you have to go back to your inner um, life and explore your family of origin such that you can communicate to your wife that you're really doing deep inner work and trying to work on your self-esteem and trying to figure out which needs didn't get met. And this is why you've been so obsessed with sex. And if she truly understands that, most women aren't going to be like, oh, cool, so it's not about sex. Well, then I guess we don't have to have any. They're not going to say that because they're not demons, you know? Like, sure, your wife, can she tend to be a little self-centered? Sure. But A, that was a defensive reaction to her own upbringing and a protective mechanism, so she didn't get steamrolled like probably her mother, possibly her father. But Either way, she loves you, she wants to stay married, so she's going to respect and admire your attempt at deep internal work. She'll understand the relevance of sex in a new way because it has to do with you, 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 you. Not just men need sex. Nah, that should be like, yeah, well, women need the house cleaned. So then you're at an impasse and you hate each other more. But if you talk about who you are, why your own self-esteem issues have come to bear on this, and then you even fall on your sword and say God's honest truth, which is it isn't about sex. The thing that you're most scared to say, because you're like, shit, if I say it isn't about sex, then she's never going to have sex with me (laughs) ever again. Well, A, how are you doing so far in that department while obsessing about it? Not too great. And B, like, isn't your point here to be an authentic, genuine person? It's never about sex because I say to men all the time, two things prove that it's not about sex. A, would you rather get laid tonight or would you rather have a love letter all about how your wife wants you, needs you, and loves you? Every man says the, the first. A passionate love letter, what they would take over the next 15 times of having sex. And B, if your wife's vagina did fall off in a horrible accident, would you leave her? And they all say no. So, I mean, how is it going to be about sex? And what kind of man, a a true piece of shit, will leave their wife if she can't have sex anymore uh, medically, you know, or she has cancer or something, God forbid, right? So, but you're not that guy. If you're listening to 200 plus podcasts, you're not the guy who would do that. So you're the guy who would stay no matter what, as long as you knew her intentions were to deeply understand you and love you. And if she understands why you want this deep understanding and love in it, like to be truly known, understood, validated in the way that you want for once, instead of doing what everybody else wants, what your parents wanted, what the people at work want, what she wants, what the kids want. If she understands what this deeply means to you, then however she may choose to express that sexually will likely be uh, very transformational, quite honestly, you know? So, So that would be sex that has love in it. And so don't negotiate for sex that doesn't have love anywhere in it. That is not going to make you feel better. Sex with love in it where there is loving connection is what would be reparative, right? So go get your own therapy. Your wife will really appreciate it. Um, And... Uh, I, uh, I'm always available, I'm not always available, but you can always see if I am or the people in my best life behavioral health practice and think about this deeply. And why don't you be honest and share this one with your wife, right? Cause you've shared all the other ones. So share this one, which is like, maybe it isn't about sex. I'm open to thinking that it's not about you giving me a blowjob per se. It's what the blowjob would mean. It's literally that you would love me enough to do it and to do it with love. That is something I never got in any way. And honestly, most guys that I talk to, if their wife came over and sat in their lap and hugged them and kissed them, uh, all of a sudden, somehow their need for a blowjob would 
diminished by like 50%. Probably per encounter. I'm not even joking. The guys I talk to are so love starved. It's like those those things where they ask you to donate your change into the ASPCA, <laughs> into the jar, like at the checkout, like by the cashier, like the dogs that look at you with their eyes, like those dogs and the men that I work with get like almost equivalent amount of physical affection. So, you know, I mean, it's it's a it's a problem. So listen to this podcast together and or don't if she's like, don't send me one more of that woman's podcast or I'm going to leave you. Why don't you just respect that? But use this for the introspection piece of get your own therapy and figure out why you've become obsessed with this and and uh, superstitiously assumed that some more shitty sex is going to help because it isn't. And on that note, I will leave you and have a great day. Wait, I do this infrequently, only in the fair play one, but I did remember something that I wanted to explain that I didn't know if sufficiently was explained. As for the biological piece, all women's sex drive decreases within monogamy. However, in the situation that I'm describing where the man is taught to repudiate his needs, he doesn't say anything soon enough. He doesn't, for example, ramp up the romance and the closeness and talk directly about the sex life and, oh, we need to get back together, we need to do these things because he doesn't feel he needs to. And as I said, he's drawn to a woman who has more specific boundaries boundaries about what she will and will not do due to her own issues. So while everybody's sex drive goes down after marriage and after kids, in the specific cases that I'm talking about, it goes down, um, the sex drive doesn't go down more, but the sex goes down more because the man subconsciously allows it to and or starts to hyper fixate on only the sexual piece um, because he's kind of obsessed with these unresolved issues in his own childhood of his needs not getting met so that the woman feels even more turned off. The man may have even less empathy because he feels he's always getting short under the stick, basically always in his whole life in terms of getting his needs met. So he becomes hyper focused on solely getting the sex life back without then understanding and empathizing with maybe what it's like for a woman after children, et cetera, et cetera. So that is what I meant. Everybody's sex drive does go down, though. There's no way that you could have prevented that with a different choice. There are women who are higher libido than their partners, but they got their own problem. They got the gender inverse of what I'm talking about, um, where they're the ones who never got their needs met. So a guy refusing sex in the dating, they don't even think about is like the hugest red flag of all red flags in the world. All right. Talk to you all soon. Bye bye.